everyone, and welcome to the Pash On Podcast. Let's get started with your host, Brian Pash. Hi, this is Brian Pash, and welcome to another exciting podcast interview with industry leaders seeking to improve outcomes in modern automotive retailing. Today on the podcast, I'm pleased to welcome co-founder and CEO of Full Path, Aharon Horwitz. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Brian. Great to be back with you. Well, first of all, uh, we are excited to see how your platform has been evolving. Uh, I, I love your product updates and uh, these quarterly insights on how the platform's growing. For people who are not familiar with the current capabilities of the Full Path tech stack, how would you describe it? And then we'll talk about what's coming and the current applications of the tech. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's a, a holistic solution. So what we offer is first a customer data platform, uh, which uh, as you, Brian, have so uh, clearly articulated to the industry, takes data from all the different um, dealership silo, data silos, CRM, DMS, website, et cetera, and pulls it into one, what we call a clean data layer. So as a simple example, in one place, a name is written in all caps. In another place, it's written in regular uh, punctuation. We would be able to know that and merge that into one clean uh, data file. And then what you get ultimately when you take all the data is a 360 degree view of a customer and a 360 degree view of a vehicle. Uh, and when you have that, the second part of our platform comes into play, which is the marketing automation piece, what we call our experience engine. And we can take that clean data and that organized data from multiple silos, and we can then determine the next best marketing action on every single uh, shopper or uh, or lead that the dealership has in its database. Uh, here we use a lot of techniques, you know, the obvious outbound channels like uh, uh, digital advertising, uh, email, SMS, but we also use quite a bit of AI to uh, both try to understand what to show and uh, to then uh, affect it. So for a dealership, it really is just a pillar of a modern dealership. Uh, and we think that, you know, having a CDP with some marketing capacity and AI is, is critical for dealers that want to succeed going forward. You know, and for our listeners here who may not understand completely the benefits of a CDP. Um, and, you know, of course, we always have detractors in the marketplace saying uh, CDPs are the next shiny object. But the truth is, uh, outside of automotive, any multi-million dollar organization values their customer data. And we know as an industry that the DMS is a data at rest, historical record of transactions. Every day, data in that DMS is uh, broken as people move, as cars are sold outside of the dealership. And we know the CRM is a dirty cesspool of data as uh, sales agents can modify, change, or even even mark an opportunity as no longer in market to make their conversion rates or pay plans uh, look more favorable to them. So there needs to be a place, a safe place for dealers to collect, manage, do proper data hygiene. So a CDP will be the third leg in the stool of dealership operations. And then as Aharon mentioned, is the ability to activate on that data. But one, one thing that I'm finding is that dealers really don't know how dirty their data is. Um, they're still giving people access to their DMS to do direct mail pieces, email pieces to people who no longer own these vehicles. What's <laughs> what's going to get dealers to wake up for their need to move to a CDP, Aharon? Yeah, well, A, I think it's, first of all, you articulated it uh, quite well as to why CDP is important. Um, one of the, the questions I always ask a dealer is uh, what's their data strategy and what's their first party data strategy? And most dealers sort of do a double take when I ask that because it's not a question that they've uh, commonly been asked. And when, when they ask me what I mean, I, I usually use an image of like um, two icebergs and, and I show two icebergs floating above the water. And I say, here's a here's two dealerships, each represented 
uh, by an iceberg and the data is represented by an iceberg. And um, if I look at them, they each have 150,000, you know, context, people that they've interacted with, okay? And they each want to make a lot of sales. Uh, they have the same amount of inventory. And then I zoom out and I show them that beneath the waterline, one of the icebergs has no bottom. And the other iceberg has a very, a very deep bottom. Uh, and, you know, this visual is meant to obviously represent the sophistication of their data. So, for example, in the first case, uh, the dealer uh, knows what was the last vehicle the person looked at. The dealer knows uh, what their household looks at. Uh, the dealer knows uh, what they were browsing on last week on the website. The dealer knows what emails they were opening up. Now, I don't mean they know it as in they know it in their head. I mean that the CDP, the customer data platform, has really well structured and organized tables where all this data is being logged in a way that can be then leveraged and activated on. So you look at two de dealerships from the outside, they both have 150,000 contacts, they both have cars on the lot, and uh, one of them can actually target very specifically what someone needs and get them the right message at the right time. You know, when their lease is coming due as they're on the website, looking at a different model that maybe they were looking at last time, and the other one can't do that. So I believe that in any given month, sure, maybe one dealer might outperform or whatnot, but over uh, the course of time, the dealership that invests in having a really strong rooted data uh, that sits underneath and very clear lines of connectivity to the marketing automation, so we don't have to rely on manual processes, but that is available for manual processes, that ultimately they're going to win out and they're going to make more sales uh, and they're going to sell more inventory. Um, this becomes, by the way, even more acute when you look at the situation with inventory piling up, right? As people are feeling pressure on their floor plan financing and they're feel, feeling pressure with you know, some of the things we're seeing going on in Detroit and, and what have you, and they really need to move cars or they need to prepare for you know price increases or what have you, then the data becomes even more important because you can really generate off that rich database, you know that that below the waterline stuff, you can really generate uh, targeting uh, for people uh, in a way that's uh, uh, more entrepreneurial and and initiated rather than just relying on frankly, you know uh, elbow grease and getting lucky uh, if you don't have that data spec'd out. So I think that just over time dealers with proper CDP structures and aligned marketing automation, are going to outperform uh, the market. And we'll see that and it'll pull the whole market that way, but but it's gonna take time. Yeah, and uh, you know, I am working on some new research and I'm writing as fast as I can. I wanna share one recent observation uh, that every dealer can identify with. Most dealers uh, are working with some email marketing company. Uh, typically that company is taking uh, data from the DMS, maybe the CRM, and they're sending out emails. And what dealers don't know is there is an email auditing process that happens on the best email companies. Here's an example. I give uh, a list to the email company of 5,000 people. Um, they'll process all those email addresses and they will not email 5,000 people because there's technology out there that says, hey, this is a potential spam. This is a potential trap. This is a high, um, high complaint email. And they will flag emails in addition to being undeliverable. The dealer never sees that list. The dealer never does anything with that list. And here's the reason why. Because there's no place for them to go in and set up a data process to get that data hygiene. Recently, I was at a high value dealer, Lamborghini dealership, and they went out to do an email and 27 people's email addresses came back on deliverable. How many dealers can really understand that could be millions of dollars, those 27 people, millions of dollars in revenue. But if they don't have a data strategy for their first party data, then, well, that information gets buried. What should be happening is that when our customers are flagged as a bad email or an undeliverable email, it should be pushed through the CDP into a calling campaign so that record can be updated. The, the, the call centers 
not going to be able to update the DMS in most dealerships, but they can update the CDP. Aharon, this is just one little example of how dealers are losing customers every single day from moves. So their direct mail breaks, phone calls when their phone call, uh, where their phone changes or emails when their email becomes hot or undeliverable. It's a multi-million dollar problem. How is Full Path looking at your future state to be able to take these signals in and then create data hygiene processes to keep the dealer's data and customers uh, able to be contacted? Yeah, this is really a key point. Um, and I think here what, what the dealer needs to think about is that this is just a muscle that runs in the background. And it's just constantly cleaning and improving the data because uh, without good data, you have a hard time executing on a data strategy. You have a hard time uh, getting the most out of uh, your uh, your data, and of course, you have uh, quite a bit of waste when it comes to uh, your spend. So we we do we already take a lot of steps, but um, are are investing very much in taking more. For example, we have a very significant um, uh, kind of uh, email validation process. Uh, that we put uh, every email list through, uh, we do flag it into our system. Um, now, again, here's where the challenge comes in, right? Uh, we may do something in our system, and we've done a really good job of getting data into our system. What we are always looking for is a way to push it back into the dealer's other systems. Mm, that's right. And, you know, Brian, one of the things you've talked about a lot uh, publicly is, is just APIs, uh, you know, and as have we, that when you have a really healthy API environment, uh, Vendors can work together uh, to help the ultimate client. And when it's difficult for us as a, a very data aware company, which has tremendous insight into what's going on out in the edges of the data, and we're bringing that back into one uh, centralized uh, point, we want to push that to the dealer's other systems. So for example, I'll just give you two simple examples. If, if, uh, you know, as you mentioned, if we find that an email is undeliverable or is just like we have all this logic that fixes emails, maybe in the CRM, some someone forgot to put in the, the M at the end of dot com. We can update that and fix that on our end. We need to be able to push that back to CRM and DMS to fix it on that end. It's one simple example, the simplest example, right? The uh, more sophisticated examples are, are like this. Let's say we know that uh, a person browsing the website right now came in on an ad with a very specific lease offer. We would love to tell the chat on the website that maybe is not full path, even though we do have a chat, an AI chat, a GPT chat, but other uh, some vendors, some dealers don't use our chat. They use another chat. We'd love to tell the other vendor chat, hey, by the way, if you're going to start a conversation with uh, this person browsing the site right now, you should mention this lease offer because that's the ad they clicked on. And we'd like to tell the website, as opposed to doing it the way we do it today by you know sticking it in on the modal le le level, we'd love to tell the website, hey, prioritize on the VDP that they came into or that they're on right now. There's a lease offer that they're really excited about. Stick it in there, like put mm -hmm. a box in the lease offer. So that level of API integration exists outside of auto and uh, it's quite doable. Uh, in fact, we've, we've done it uh, many times outside of auto, and we're still looking for ways to do it in auto at the uh, level of, uh, of uh, fidelity that it needs to create the best shopping experience. So again, we can all work on the uh, the, the muscle of cleaning and, and, and fixing data, and, I, and you know, indeed we do, and I think there's a lot more to come on that. But one of the uh, infrastructure pieces that as an industry we need to do is the uh, API wiring. Yes, yes. And Aharana, one thing I will tell you, um, of all the website companies, Dealery Process has really committed to being that connected retail platform. And, and I hope um, your dev team reaches out because uh, I've been encouraging other CDP platforms to reach out to DEP because they want to be uh, the first to have the most robust API to accept those customization signals, to personalize the website, but not based on their tech, based on the CDP tech that uh, a dealer chooses, like the full path platform. And I will tell you one other thing about APIs. Um, one of the advantages of your platform is um, to use data to override um, blunders, for example. 
uh, a lead in the CRM is marked as no longer in market yet, you recognize them back on the website. To be able to insert a update to that CRM record to say, hey, this person's just visited a website, they're looking at these, they're back in market, or an existing customer who didn't submit a lead uh, recently, but is back in market. These preemptive messages do a lot to increase uh, retention rates, uh, reduce defection, but yet so many CRMs have never thought of being more real-time and transactional. Uh, this is something that we have to work to as an industry, especially as your vision is not to be everything, but to be the connecting um, framework to enable better utilization of the CRM, better utilization of marketing, better personalization of websites. That's a vision, Haran, that I am buying into 100%. Yeah, I think I think that that's, that's really a huge opportunity. Um, and, you know, there, I, like I, I look, you know, I'm looking now, uh, I was recently looking at just a, I don't know, a reasonably, not a huge Toyota store, but I was looking at a Toyota store that was trying to understand what its data strategy can be. And, you know, when you start to analyze their, their data, you know, let's take DMS, well, let's take CRM first. Um, you know, this particular de dealership, not a huge dealership has uh, 25,000 uh, total shoppers in when you when you re remove duplicates and you kind of resolve them down into one shopper, right? They had like let's say 40, 40 thousand, but a lot of garbage, a lot of a lot of duplicates, right? Clean it out. You've got twenty four thousand actual human beings who they've interacted with, say over the past seven years, who could be a car buyer. Um, but when you go deeper and you look at it, uh, nineteen thousand of them have emails, right? So let's call it I don't know seventy six, seventy seven percent of the twenty four thousand, right? It's something like that. And when you go deeper, only we found that only about 12, 12,500 or maybe it's 12,800, something like that, are emailable. Um, mm. Why are they Why are they not emailable? For, for a host of reasons. One, there's bad emails. So when we ran it through, we saw, you know, bad, bad uh, morphology of emails, mistakes, uh, you know, yahoo.co instead of yahoo.com, whatever it might be. And then quite a few on a do not email. When you yep. go deeper, why are they on a do not email? Not because they opted out, but because the CRM had some sort of time out function where after a certain amount of days, they were marked as do not email. Uh, and uh, that that's a that that's a CRM or a potential target list of 25,000 that is now really about 12. And so if I'm that dealer, I'm thinking to myself, well, A, could I do some sort of message out to the, DN the do not contact people who were not opt outs, but were just opted out by by a CRM or what have you and see which of those are still aware and awake. Can I check if some of those people were on my website recently? Indeed, some were. So why should they be opt-outs, right? Uh, without Unless they choose to opt out. And then I could also think about others who don't have an email to do a campaign to get their email and fill out the data and enrich the data, right? So all of that uh, effort that goes on behind the scenes is critical for dealers that want to uh, take advantage of all the technology that you're talking about. Uh, and I'm glad to hear that there's some vendors you're working with that that uh, that are uh, are helping uh, facilitate that. That's right, because at the end of the day, the dealers who get that their first party data management is holding them back uh, financially will start to make the investments. Uh, I'll give you another example. Um, another dealer group I'm working on a CDP project. We took one store, we took data for the last uh, four years. And uh, 50, only 52% of the people in the DMS still own the car that was there. 48% had uh, sold that car to someone else. Yet, of course, we had to get that data from outside the DMS. Yep. So as you mentioned, <laughs> um, let's, let's add one more level. You said, hey, if we started with 25,000, hey, there's a lot that didn't have emails. And then the ones that had emails, some of them were bad, and that cut down the list. Now, what if we said probably half of those people own the car that we think they own? Um, and you could start to understand why dealers are frustrated with their marketing investments, their direct mail efforts, um, their call center efforts. Yet, outside of automotive, 
customer data platforms um, are the solution because we can create an updated, accurate uh, 360 view of each customer through data partnerships, through data hygiene. And then, as you mentioned, there has to be now a investment for dealers when their valued customers get flagged as undeliverable for email or change of address, decide whether or not we still want to uh, market to them. Are they out of state? And then, of course, if we try to call them and the number is disconnected, this is really that next step. And I and I think, Haran, there is going to come a new company or service that's going to be able to plug in to dealers, CDPs, and handle these exceptions through uh, call center strategy. I think it will absolutely make sense in the future. We just never had a tool that a third party call center could update, but a trusted partner could definitely update your CDP. Uh, and the dealer would feel more comfortable with that than say having them go into the DMS. Do you agree? Yeah. By the way, I think that's a very good point. Uh, and it does work. Uh, we've done it ad hoc a few times uh, for some dealers, you know, over the years where we've sort of made an effort to help them. Um, you know, it's in our interest for them to have have their data uh, fully um, as fully baked as possible. So we, we've we done it and you can see the results. Um, these are not sophisticated. It's not a complex call to no. <laughs> shout to someone and say, hey, we're calling, you know, on behalf of whatever, we'd like to just update your information or make sure this is correct. I mean, there's, it's, that's not a complex um, uh, initiative. And I think that the dealers really benefit from it. The shoppers benefit. Um, and it, it is something that should happen. And, and, and rather than worrying about getting it a hundred percent right, which is, I think the mistake sometimes the trap dealers fall, fall into sometimes what they need to have is the muscle operating all the time. Yes. And you'll never be a hundred percent, but with the muscle operating all the time behind the scenes, uh, you'll always be better uh, than you were before. And that's that's really what you want to see. It's just this constant um, improvement. And I think also sometimes, you know, when those of us who who operate in a more of a marketing environment, you know, we understand that marketing is, uh, it, it's, it's, it's mass, but it's also very specific. And so the more specific you can get using mass marketing tools, the 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 better performance you're going to get, right? You know, we went from a world where you just send a message to everyone in New York, and then you want to go to a world where you say, okay, I'm going to look for people who I, I think live in in Yankee territory and people who live in Met territory, and now I'm going to do a Yankee message, a Met message. Then we get went to a world where you say, well, now I want to even get it down to, uh, uh, you know, what's what's the age demographic? So which players do they probably most connect to? I mean, you could get really sophisticated, and we're at a level with the amount of data that we have on the dealer. A shopping journey that we can get down to a one-to-one -one message. I can literally craft every email, every message, every on-site message to be about what they are either predicted by our AI to most be interested in, or really what they were interested in, because we saw that they were either opening an email with a certain type of car, a certain model. Uh, and, and that's a very powerful tool for a dealer to unleash. And if you want to succeed again, you know, competing, competing in the in, in the future when you're we're all we all know dealers are going to be up against the most sophisticated technology players. Uh, out there, uh, we we have to get this tech into the dealers in a way that works, and we have to overcome some of the kind of historical um, tendencies to uh, to not necessarily operate in 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 a in a data strategy rich manager manner. I agree. I agree. You know, recently, a little over a year ago, Carrie and I bought a small uh, dog, a toy poodle, and of course, uh, she has stolen our hearts. And even today, uh, data is available to know if a household is a dog owner or a cat owner. And in a CDP, uh, images on vehicles could be customized to show pets and, uh, you know, uh, uh, Ford truck versus not, not pets. Or if somebody is active uh, with sports or someone no who has a new child, um, Outside of automotive, these personalized messages are, are commonplace, but you need a CDP to absolutely append this data. And I think that what I want to tell the dealers who are listening is there's two pieces to the puzzle. Are you going to value your first party data and which platform are you going to choose that gives you the most options to keep that data up to date? And then number two, how easy is it for 
uh, marketing and messaging to be activated. And, you know, I guess there's a third piece, Aharon, is whether or not the platform is co-opable or not. And, and can you speak to that? I know you've been growing in the number of OEM programs. Um, can we can we talk a little bit to that on um, marketing activation and co-op programs? Do you see dealers making that a big issue or are they really just more uh, interested in getting their data organized and activated and co-op isn't the determining factor? Yeah, so so it's a great question. I mean, right now, Full Path is, is in, uh, we, we've recently joined a few new programs. Um, we're in we're in Stellantis, we're in Toyota, we're in Maserati, we're in Subaru. We have a few more coming uh, quite soon. And what's interesting is that most of the OEMs uh, in the industry are still operating in a very um, segmented uh, manner. So, you know, they'll usually, they'll usually align their co-op with like atomic uh, apps, you know, or a, a, a sort of atomized vi vision of apps. Like, you know, there's a chat co-op and then there's maybe a dig, dig ad co-op. Then there's a, a, a social dig ad co-op and then there's website and that, Right. So the holistic view, which is, I think, the view that is going to ultimately prevail, where where you have a, 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 you know, a data infrastructure that's an actual thing that dealers value and consider important. And then you have on top of it uh, marketing functions that talk to each other and work together. And they can all be, in fact, you know, bundled and seen as one piece of technology. Again, leaving the auto industry, you know, you look at the different, you know, you look at Salesforce's different clouds, you look at the HubSpot clouds, you look at the Marketo clouds, right? There's there's not really a bifurcation into uh, one or one or two things or three things or four or five things or an atomization into one or, two, or five things. It's really seen as either one thing or or a couple different clouds, a customer cloud, a sales cloud, you know, a marketing cloud, right? Um, a data analytics cloud. So I think that that's, I hope that's where the OEMs will ultimately go. Uh, you know, where SMS shouldn't be a special co-op program. SMS is just a function in the outreach tools of, uh, of, of, a, of a CDP aligned marketing platform. So we've been talking to dealers about that, uh, to OEMs about that. Um, I think that'll be an industry, industry transition that'll take a while, but uh, the OEMs are, are, are still largely um, uh, co-oping on the specific app functions, but they are, understanding now and talking about the data layer, the data infrastructure and aligned marketing. So I think we'll see that catch up uh, at some point uh, down the road. Aron, when we think of the opportunities for dealers, I couldn't be more excited about your product strategy, the growth in the platform, integrating with more data hygiene partners, with call center partners, with call recording partners. There's a lot of excitement there. Um, for dealers who need to get a demo of the platform, what's the best place for them to go and uh, really dive into the benefits of a connected platform with data hygiene, data management, and data activation? So we try to put out a lot of content. Um, and, and it all actually routes through into our website, but we put it out on multiple platforms. But if you go to fullpath.com, F-U-L-L-P-A-T-H.com, uh, we have a really nice um, resources uh, tab. And in there, we have a lot of webinars. We have we have a blog where we put out some long, long form stuff. Um, and we try to really talk about these things because you know the way we see our company is, is really developing in partnership with, uh, with dealers. And we spend a lot of time talking to dealers, listening, hearing what their challenges are, and then we think about how to translate those into uh, into technology. And uh, and and a lot of that thinking we try to do out loud in in public. So uh, you know that's that's a great place to go. Um, and you can also look at Full Path on LinkedIn. We put up good content there. But we would we would be very happy to uh, share with any dealer uh, our our whole suite and think about their needs and whether what we have fits them or or if another company in the industry fits them, we're always happy to recommend. So <clears throat> I would definitely take a look at our website. Right. Well, um, this podcast interview is part of a series as we get ready for the Modern Retailing Conference, November 12th, 13th, and 14th in Palm Beach. And well, uh, 
the team for Full Path will be there. Uh, we're going to be talking about first party data management. We're going to be pushing the envelope and challenging the industry for greater connectivity, greater partnerships. So you're not going to want to miss the Modern Retailing Conference. If you haven't got your tickets, uh, don't wait much longer because the event will sell out and it has every year. Go to modernretailingconference.com. And Aharon, I want to thank you and the team uh, for supporting dealer education. Uh, Palm Beach isn't a bad place to be in November. Um, so for the dealers who are listening, we hope that you will consider the challenge that is in front of you about will you get serious about managing your first party data and building that lifetime value and retention strategy that Aaron is providing for dealers. And if you are listening to this podcast for the first time, keep in mind that there are dozens of interviews with industry leaders, disruptors, and uh, people that are working to make the automotive retail experience uh, more enjoyable for all parties. So don't forget to just search for the Brian Pash podcast on your favorite podcast channel. Aharon, one last word for dealers who are on the fence about getting serious about first-party data management. What do you tell them to take action? It's far less painful than you think. <clears throat> and if you do it right, it will create just a sustainable growth in uh, in sales and revenue. So there's a, there's no there's no reason not to try it out. So uh, come to fullpath.com. Come to MRC. Um, we'd love to talk with you. And uh, thank you, Brian, for having me on. Right. Well, thank you for being a part of Dealer Education and the great Modern Retailing Conference coming up. I want to thank everyone for listening in. And don't forget to listen in to the entire podcast series as we lead up to the Modern Retailing Conference. Thank you and have a great day.